I'm gonna stay in the circle, staying centered. Because I'm in the circle, I have the right of way. That's always the rule. And then when I'm ready to exit the circle, I'm gonna put on my right turn signal to tell everybody I'm heading out to the right. Hey, it's Jacqueline, and today we are gonna figure out traffic circles. I hope you came here today because you want to learn how you can navigate traffic circles safely in your community. In my community, we call traffic circles circles and sometimes roundabouts. We're going to talk about how to navigate a circle, how to safely enter and exit a circle, and how to keep in mind the different things that are going around the circle. Let's go out on the road and check out a couple situations and talk through how we can safely navigate traffic circles. Here we go. So there are two kinds of circles that are used in the community that I live in. The first thing we're gonna see is called a traffic calming circle. It's a circle placed in the intersection of a traditional intersection, a four-way crossing. I'm gonna make a left at this traffic circle. There's a picture that shows me exactly what to do. The important thing for me to remember at this traffic calming circle is that I still use my signal to indicate where I'm turning. Traffic in the circle always has the right of way. So once I'm in the circle, everyone waits for me. And then I continue forward. Let's do another left turn at this traffic calming circle. Left turn signal, safe speed, safe turn, and completing my left. So a traffic calming circle follows the regular rules of any intersection. You put on your left turn signal to turn left, you put on your right turn signal to turn right, and if you were continuing straight, you don't use your signal. In that case, the circle is just there to slow folks down in a neighborhood the physical barrier of the concrete slows people down and we all figure out how to move together without bumping into each other. If you're studying for your permit or learning to drive, I recommend that you check out Zootobi.com. They have an amazing app with tons of DMV practice tests to help prepare you for your permit test. It goes through everything you need to know in detail and has hundreds of illustrations to make it easier to understand and remember the information. With more than 100,000 ratings, Zootobi is one of the most widely used driver's ed resources in the U.S. and a must-have for learners. Check it out and see for yourself. Now we're going to enter into a traffic circle that is called a roundabout. And that means when you're going around this circle, in my mind, there's a lot to think about. And also, there's a lot to keep track of. I'm gonna go around this bus safely, taking my spot at the limit line. And as we look at the circle, we see a pedestrian crossing that goes all around. We know there could be a bike lane going around. We have a yellow line on the left hand side so that we don't get too close to the curb. And to exit the circle, I indicate and only cross over if it's safe. So our important work is entering the circle without disrupting the flow of traffic. We remember that traffic in the circle has the right of way. Once we're in the circle, we stay centered. And when we are ready to exit the circle, we signal, check the bike lane, yield to the pedestrian crossing, and then continue. That was a perfect example of why it's so important to signal when you're exiting the circle. 
because your signal flashes to everybody, hey, I'm coming your way, watch out for me. We're gonna go back to that same circle and we're gonna enter from a different spot just so that you can really come to understand how at any given time, different folks could be engaged with the circle. And as a driver of a large steel vehicle, I have to make sure that when I enter, I am entering cautiously and I would not accidentally intersect with any of the other folks. And we remember, everyone enters the circle from the right, so we do not signal right. We only signal when we are prepared to exit. There, I was yielding to the car that was already in the circle. I'm going around the circle and signaling to the world, hey, I'm coming this way. And that way, if there was a cyclist or a pedestrian crossing, they would see my flashing lights. They would expect me to go to the right and I would make sure that I didn't surprise anybody. Once I did a funny online quiz that was trying to guess where people were from and they had all different kinds of names for traffic circles. And the idea was that they would be able to tell where you were from regionally based on what you call the thing I call traffic circles. And roundabout was the alternative that was most familiar to me. But I would be curious, what are these things called in the community where you grew up? Whether it's another part of the United States or if we're lucky and we get you from another country, leave a comment and let me know what are roundabouts or traffic circles called where you grew up? Now I'm on a road that leads to a traffic circle with several exits. So I just wanna talk about the way your navigation device might direct you around a traffic circle. When I'm approaching a traffic circle in an unfamiliar area and I'm using a navigation device, I listen really closely to the navigation device because it will say things like exit at the fourth exit. So your job is, when you enter the circle, literally to be counting. Okay, one, two, three, four. And then if you were doing your job right, you would signal before the fourth exit to tell everybody you're moving to the right. You're breaking out of the circle. So we're gonna practice that up here. We're gonna enter a traffic circle and we're gonna exit at the fourth exit. And I'm gonna do the counting. When I enter this circle, I am entering from a yield. That means I don't stop unless I have to. I take my space in the center of the circle. I'm counting my exits, and this is my fourth exit. I signal and I look and make sure there's no cyclist or pedestrian that I would intersect with to exit the circle. Let's go back and enter that same circle. This time we're gonna enter from a stop sign. So while we're on the way, I wanna talk about the difference between entering a circle from a yield and entering a circle from a stop sign. If you enter a circle from a yield, that means don't stop unless you have to. And cars behind you will not expect that you would stop unless there was a pedestrian, a cyclist, a car, a deer, who knows, whatever was blocking your path. But if nothing is blocking your path, the important safe work that you're gonna do is continue flowing because that's what everyone around you expects. And sometimes new drivers feel like they're being safer by slowing or stopping when they're unsure. And that can cause a backup behind you. 
So you want to avoid that. You want to think about driving harmoniously with traffic. When you enter the circle, you flow with the flow of traffic around the circle. This time we are entering the circle from a stop sign. That means we have no rights. We're just taking turns with everyone else. We can see straight ahead an upside down yield sign on the very far side and we have a yield side to the right. So we yield to the people who have the right of way. We're going to stay in the circle and we're gonna exit from this exit, signaling and looking before we cut across out of the circle. That's the important work of exiting the circle. Always indicating so you can let people know, I'm cutting over. I'm back on the road, heading toward another traffic circle, and we're gonna practice again. This traffic circle has two driving lanes. The inner lane stays closest to the center and the outer lane is for the first exit. Now there's just one car lane. I'm going to go around the circle and exit here. So I put on my signal and wrap around. Remembering that when I signal to exit the circle, I'm telling people, hey, I'm going to the right. Watch out for me. Now I'm gonna make a U-turn so I can go back to the circle and I'm gonna enter from another spot. And I love how you can see how the circle is drawn, nicely painted. The idea is that we yield if we have to. If there was a reason to stop, we would. But since there isn't, we enter the circle. I'm gonna stay in the circle, staying centered. Because I'm in the circle, I have the right of way. That's always the rule. And then when I'm ready to exit the circle, I'm gonna put on my right turn signal to tell everybody I'm heading out to the right. Right signal, make sure it's clear, and exit the circle. So we have three different kinds of circles in the area that I live in. We have traffic calming circles, which we treat just like a regular intersection. If we're making a left turn, we put on our left turn signal and we go out and around the circle. If we're going straight, we navigate around the circle and straight. And if we're making a right turn, we put on our right signal and make a right at the circle. We also have traffic circles with many, many exits, roundabouts, where you could go around and about in any different direction. In larger traffic circles, some people might enter from a yield, some people might enter from a stop sign, and your job is to make sure that you do the right thing depending on what other cars and people and cyclists are gonna expect of you. And the circle that we just completed is just a traffic calming circle with yields all around, and the idea is it just keeps traffic flowing, everybody enters safely, yielding, and exiting with a right lane change. So always remember, when you enter the circle, you enter safely, not disturbing any traffic in the circle. And when you exit, you use your right turn signal to tell people you're heading out. And that way no one will be surprised. Thank you so much for watching this video on traffic circles and roundabouts. I hope it helps you feel like you can navigate the circles of our world a little better. Safe driving to you, take care, and I'll see you next time.